The Andrews sisters were an American close harmony singing group of the swing and boogie woogie eras. The group consisted of three sisters, contralto Laverne Sophia, soprano Maxine Anglin, and mezzo-soprano Patricia Marie Patty. The sisters have sold an estimated 80 million records. Their 1941 hit Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy can be considered an early example of jump blues. Other songs closely associated with the Andrews sisters include their first major hit, They Mir Bis Du Schern, Beer Barrel Polka, Beat Me Daddy, A to the Bar, Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree, and Rum and Coca-Cola, which helped introduce American audiences to Calypso. The Andrews sisters' harmonies and songs are still influential today, and have been copied and recorded by entertainers such as Patti Page, Bette Midler, Christina Aguilera, Pentatonix, and others. The group was among the inaugural inductees to the Vocal Group Hall of Fame upon its opening in 1998. Writing for Bloomberg, Mark Schuifet said the sisters became the most popular female vocal group of the first half of the 20th century. They are still widely acclaimed today for their famous close harmonies. They were inducted into the Minnesota Rock Slash Country Hall of Fame in May 2006. Early Life The sisters were born to Olga Ali and Peter Andreas. Mr. Andreas was Greek and his wife was of Norwegian ancestry raised in the Lutheran faith. The Sali family disapproved of Olga's marriage, but the relationship was repaired once their first child, Laverne, was born July 6, 1911. Their second daughter, Anglin, died at eight months of age on March 16, 1914. Maxine arrived on January 3, 1916, and Patty was born February 16, 1918. Patty, the youngest and the lead singer of the group, was seven when the group was formed, and 12 when they won first prize at a talent contest at the local Orpheum Theater in Minneapolis, where Laverne played piano accompaniment for the silent film showings in exchange for free dancing lessons for herself and her sisters. Following the collapse of their father's Minneapolis restaurant, the sisters went on the road to support the family. All three attended Franklin Junior High School and North High School, both in Minneapolis. Career They started their career as imitators of an earlier successful singing group, the Boswell Sisters, who were popular in the 1930s. After singing with various dance bands and touring in vaudeville with Leon Belasco and comic band leader Larry Rich, they first came to national attention with their recordings and radio broadcasts in 1937, most notably via their major Decca record hit, Bay Mir Bis Du Schern, originally a Yiddish tune, the lyrics of which Sammy Khan had translated to English and which the girls harmonized to perfection. They followed this success with a string of best-selling records over the next two years and they became a household name by the 1940s. Instrumental to the sisters' success over the years were their parents, Olga and Peter, their orchestra leader and musical arranger, Big Shane, and Jack and David Cap, who founded Decca Records. World War II In the years just before and during World War II, the Andrews sisters were at the height of their popularity, and the group still tends to be associated in the public's mind with the war years. They had numerous hit records during these years, both on their own and in collaboration with Bing Crosby. Some of these hits had service or military-related themes, including Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy, Three Little Sisters, Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree, A Hot Time in the Town of Berlin and Rum and Coca-Cola. The sisters performed their hits in service comedy films like Buck Privates and Private Buckaroo. During the war, They entertained the Allied forces extensively in Africa, and Italy, as well as in the U.S., visiting Army, Navy, Marine, and Coast Guard bases, war zones, hospitals, and munitions factories. They encouraged U.S. citizens to purchase war bonds with their rendition of Irving Berlin's song Any Bonds Today? They also helped actress Betty Davis and actor John Garfield found California's famous Hollywood canteen, a welcome retreat for servicemen where the trio often performed, volunteering their personal time to sing and dance for the soldiers, sailors, and marines. While touring, they often treated three random servicemen to dinner when they were dining out. They recorded a series of victory discs for distribution to Allied fighting forces only, again volunteering their time for studio sessions for the Music Branch, Special Service Division, of the Army Service Forces, and they were dubbed the Sweethearts of the Armed Forces Radio Service for their many appearances on shows such as Command Performance, Mail Call, and GI Journal. The sisters' 1945 hit Rum and Coca-Cola became one of their most popular and best-known recordings, but also inspired some controversy. 
Some radio stations were reluctant to play the record because it mentioned a commercial product by name, and because the lyrics were subtly suggestive of local women prostituting themselves to U.S. servicemen serving at the then naval base on Trinidad. The song was based on a Trinidadian calypso, and a dispute over its provenance led to a well-publicized court case. The sisters later told biographers that they were asked to record the tune on short notice and were unaware either of the copyright issue or of the implications of the lyrics. Career Interruption An ad in the 1951 radio annual showed photos of the Andrews as children, as contemporary singers, and as old women in the then-future year of 1975, although the act would not make it that long. In the 1950s, Patty Andrews decided to break away from the act to be a soloist. She had married the trio's pianist, Walter Weschler, who became the group's manager and demanded more money for Patty. When Maxine and Laverne learned of Patty's decision from newspaper gossip columns rather than from their own sister, it caused a bitter two-year separation, especially when Patty sued Laverne for a larger share of their parents' estate. Patty attributed the breakup to the deaths of their parents, we had been together nearly all our lives, Patty explained in 1971. Then in one year our dream world ended. Our mother died and then our father. All three of us were upset, and we were at each other's throats all the time. In 1951, they recorded the Windmill Song which is an adaptation of the French song Mater Pierre written in 1948 by Henri Betty and Jacques Plant. The English lyrics were written by Mitchell Parrish. The Andrews sisters formally broke up in 1953. Maxine and Laverne tried to continue the act as a duo and met with good press during a 10-day tour of Australia, but a reported suicide attempt by Maxine in December 1954 put a halt to any further tours. Maxine and Laverne did appear together on the Red Skelton show on October 26, 1954, singing the humorous Why Do They Give the Solos to Patty as well as lip-syncing Beer Barrel Polka with Skelton and Drag Filling in for Patty. This however did not sit well with Patty and a cease and desist order was sent to Skelton. The sisters' private relationship was often troubled and Patty blamed it on Maxine, Ever since I was born, Maxine has been a problem, and that problem hasn't stopped, she said. The trio reunited in 1956 and signed a new recording deal with Capitol Records, for whom Patty was already a featured soloist. By this point however, rock and roll and doo-wop were dominating the charts and older artists were left by the wayside. The sisters recorded a dozen singles through 1959, some of which attempted to keep up with the times by incorporating rock sounds. None of these achieved any major success. In addition, they produced three hi-fi albums, including a vibrant LP of songs from the dancing 1920s with Billy Mays Orchestra. In 1962, they signed with Dot Records and recorded a series of stereo albums until 1967, both re-recordings of earlier hits which incorporated up-to-date production techniques, as well as new material, including I Left My Heart in San Francisco, Still, The End of the World, Puff the Magic Dragon, Sailor, Satin Doll, Mr. Bassman, the theme from Come September, and the theme from A Man and a Woman. They toured extensively during the 1960s, favoring top nightclubs in Las Vegas, Nevada, California, and London, England. Eldest sister Laverne died in 1967 at the age of 55 after a year-long bout with cancer during which she was replaced by singer Joyce DeYoung. DeYoung fulfilled concert appearances, including an appearance on The Dean Martin Show on November 30, 1967, but she did not record with Patty and Maxine. Laverne had founded the original group, and often acted as the peacemaker among the three during the sisters' lives, more often siding with her parents, to whom the girls were extremely devoted, than with either of her sisters. Their last appearance together as a trio was on The Dean Martin Show on September 29, 1966. After Laverne died, Maxine and Patty continued to perform periodically until 1968, when Maxine became the Dean of Women at Tahoe Paradise College, teaching acting, drama, and speech at a Lake Tahoe college and working with troubled teens, and Patty was once again eager to be a soloist. In 1969, Patty appeared in Lucille Ball's third series Here's Lucy, in the sixth episode of the second season, titled Lucy and the Andrews Sisters. The episode has Patty enlisting the help of Lucy, her daughter Kim, and her son Craig to perform a medley of Andrews Sisters hits for the Andrews Sisters fan club reunion. Lucy played Laverne, Kim played Maxine, and Craig played Bing Crosby. She also had a cameo as herself along with many other stars in the 1970 film The Finks. Come back. 
Patty and Maxine's careers experienced a resurgence when Bette Midler covered Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy in 1973. The next year, the pair debuted on Broadway in the Sherman Brothers' nostalgic World War II musical, Over Here, which premiered at the Schubert Theater to rave reviews. This was a follow-up to Patty's success in Victory Canteen, a 1971 California review. Over Here starred Maxine and Patty and was written with both sisters in mind for the leads. It launched the careers of many now notable theater, film, and television stars, including John Travolta, Mary Lou Henner, Treat Williams, and Anne Reinking. It was the last major tour for the sisters and was cut short owing to a conflict with the show's producers over pay for the sisters, resulting in the cancellation of an extensively scheduled road tour. Over here. Lasted only a year, and its end marked the last time the sisters would ever sing together. Patty continually distanced herself from Maxine, until her death, and would not explain her motives regarding the separation. Maxine appealed to Patty for a reunion, personally if not professionally, both in public and in private, but to no avail. Maxine suffered a serious heart attack while performing in Illinois in 1982 and underwent quadruple bypass surgery, from which she successfully recovered. Patty visited her sister while she was hospitalized. Now sometimes appearing as Patty, she re-emerged in the late 1970s as a regular panelist on The Gong Show. Maxine had a successful comeback as a cabaret soloist in 1979 and toured worldwide for the next 15 years, recording a solo album in 1985 entitled Maxine, and Andrew's sister for Bainbridge Records. Patty started her own solo act in 1980, but did not receive the critical acclaim her sister had for her performances, even though Patty was considered to be the star of the group for years. The critics' major complaint was that Patty's show concentrated too much on Andrew's sister's material, which did not allow Patty's own talents as an expressive and bluesy vocalist to shine through. The two sisters did reunite, albeit briefly, on October 1, 1987, when they received a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame even singing a few bars of Beer Barrel Polka for the Entertainment Tonight cameras. An earthquake shook the area that very morning and the ceremony was nearly cancelled, which caused Patty to joke. Some people said that earthquake this morning was Laverne because she couldn't be here, but really it was just Maxine and me on the telephone. Besides this, and a few brief private encounters, they remained somewhat estranged for the last few years. Shortly after her off-Broadway debut in New York City in a show called Swing Time Canteen, Maxine suffered another heart attack and died at Cape Cod Hospital on October 21, 1995, making Patty the last surviving Andrew's sister. Not long before she died, Maxine told music historian William Rulwan. I have nothing to regret. We got on the carousel and we each got the ring and I was satisfied with that. There's nothing I would do to change things if I could, yes, I would. I wish I had the ability and the power to bridge the gap between my relationship with my sister. Patty. Upon hearing the news of her sister's death, Patty became distraught. Several days later, Patty's husband Wally fell down a flight of stairs and broke both wrists. Patty did not attend her sister's memorial services in New York City, nor in California. Bob Hope said of Maxine's passing, she was more than part of the Andrews sisters, much more than a singer. She was a warm and wonderful lady who shared her talent and wisdom with others. Marriages, family, and deaths. Laverne Andrews married Lou Rogers, a trumpet player in Vic Shane's band, in 1948. The two remained together until Laverne's death from cancer on May 8, 1967. Lou died in 1995. The ashes of Laverne and Maxine Andrews are interred in the Columbarium of Memory of the Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery in Glendale, California, close to the ashes of their parents. Maxine Andrews married music publisher Lou Levy in 1941 separating in 1949. They adopted a girl and a boy, Aleda Ann and Peter. Levy was the sister's manager from 1937 to 1951. Later in life, according to her adopted daughter, with her manager, and longtime companion Linda Wells, Maxine entered a 13-year relationship with a woman and later spent many years as a life partner to Wells herself. To me, being gay was not a central focus of Maxine's life at all, Wells told radio station The Current in a 2019 interview. Her art was. Her singing was. But Wells says that their status as companions, and Maxine's health issues as she got older, led Maxine to adopt her as a daughter. There was no such thing as being married at that time, she said. 
During her lifetime, there was no such thing that existed for us. Patty Andrews married Agent Marty Melcher in 1947 but left him in 1949, when he pursued a romantic relationship with Doris Day. She then married Walter Weschler, the trio's pianist, in 1951. Patty died of natural causes at her home in Northridge, California, on January 30, 2013, at the age of 94. Weschler, her husband of nearly 60 years, had died on August 28, 2010, at the age of 88. Joyce DeYoung Murray, who replaced Laverne from late 1966 to 1968, died in March 2014 at the age of 87. Legacy The Andrews sisters were the most imitated of all female singing groups and influenced many artists, including Mel Torme, Les Paul, and Mary Ford, the Four Freshmen, the Beach Boys, the McGuire Sisters, the Manhattan Dolls, the Lennon Sisters, the Pointer Sisters, the Dutch girl group The Star Sisters with Patricia Pay, the Manhattan Transfer, Barry Manilow, the Beverly Bells, and Bette Midler. Elvis Presley was a fan. The imitation occurred internationally, the Harmony Sisters, a popular group that performed from the 1930s to the 1950s in Finland was one such singing group. Most of the Andrews Sisters' music has been restored and released in compact disc form. Over 300 of their original Decca recordings, a good portion of which was hit material, has yet to be released by MCA slash Decca. Many of these Decca recordings have been used in such television shows and Hollywood movies as Homefront, ER, Agent Carter, The Brinks Job, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, Swing Shift, Raggedy Man, Summer of 42, Slaughterhouse 5, Maria's Lovers, Harlem Nights, In Dreams, Murder in the First, L.A. Confidential, American Horror Story, Just Shoot Me, Gilmore Girls, Mama's Family, War, and Remembrance, Jacob the Liar, Lolita, The Polar Express, The Chronicles of Narnia, Molly, An American Girl on the Home Front, Memoirs of a Geisha, and Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown. Comical references to the trio in television sitcoms can be found as early as I Love Lucy and as recently as Everybody Loves Raymond. In 2007, their version of Bay Mir Bis du Chern was included in the game Bioshock, a first-person shooter that takes place in an alternate history 1960, and later in 2008, their song Civilization was included in the Atomic Age-inspired video game Fallout 3. The 2010 video game Mafia 2 features numerous Andrew sister songs, with Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy, Strip Polka and Rum and Coca-Cola. The 2011 video game L.A. Noir features the song Pistol Pack and Mama, where the sisters perform a duet with Bing Crosby. The sisters were again featured in a Fallout game in 2015, when their songs Pistol Pack and Mama and Civilization were featured in the game Fallout 4. Christina Aguilera used the Andrews sisters' Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy to inspire her song Candyman from her hit album Back to Basics. The song was co-written by Linda Perry. The London-based trio The Pupini Sisters uses their style harmonies on several Andrews sisters and other hits of the 1940s and 1950s as well as later rock and disco hits. The trio has said their name is a tribute to the Andrews sisters. The National World War II Museum's Victory Bells are proud to pay tribute to the Andrews sisters performing their music daily in the Stage Door Canteen in New Orleans. The Manhattan Dolls, a New York City-based touring group, performs both the popular tunes sung by the Andrews sisters and some of the more obscure tunes such as Well All Right and South American Way. In 2008 and 2009, the BBC produced the Andrews sisters, Queens of the Music Machines, a one-hour documentary on the history of the Andrews sisters from their upbringing to the present. The American premiere of the show was June 21, 2009, in their summer vacation enclave of Mound, Minnesota. In 2008, Mound dedicated the Andrews sisters' trail. The sisters spent summers in Mound with their uncles Pete and Ed Soley, who had a grocery store there. Maxine Andrews always said that the summers in Mound created a major sense of normalcy and a wonderful childhood in a life that otherwise centered on the sisters' careers. The Westonka Historical Society has a large collection of Andrews sisters' memorabilia. On June 25, 2019, the New York Times Magazine listed the Andrews sisters among hundreds of artists whose material was reportedly destroyed in the 2008 Universal Fire.